what you're planning to do with this challenge. And um, it sounds like the community that you will be working in can, can benefit from his expertise. So please share with him a little bit about your project. Hi, um, I'm Anna. And basically, the way our school is right now, we felt that um, building something here was not really the best option to go with because we have a great facility um, and we didn't really need to, we felt there were better places to put the funds. And so our plan was to build in Ecuador. Um, 18 students went there recently uh, to do some development projects and some environmental and sustainable development projects in the country. And we felt that that was an area of higher need where we could do a lot more. Um, so we're building, we have two different sites. One's on the coast in the city of Manta, and one is in the cloud forest, which is a high elevation rainforest, essentially, um, in a little village called Atenrachi. And basically, both schools have expressed interest in a computer lab um, to just get the technology to be able to sort of, um, well, they felt that that was the best need for the schools. So that's what we're building. Um, and then I had a question. Uh, you mentioned using bamboo as a building material and that it was very common in Ghana. It's also a very common material in Ecuador and I was wondering um, in what ways you use the bamboo in your structure. Um, so far we have not used bamboo within as a combining bamboo with the adobe to create a, a, a structural wall but it is very doable because that is how traditionally um, old cultures build buildings. Uh, I'm sure in um, Ecuador, if you go to any typical village, you'll have a bamboo kind of reinforcement, right? like a bamboo mesh, and then the adobe kind of wraps around it. So that's how I would encourage you to explore what you're doing um, 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 in Ecuador. It's also excellent for roof framing bamboo. It's a great material, and um, I, would, I would encourage you to also think about just understanding the, your uh, context. Let the people of the village tell you how they build, and then what you can do is kind of contemporize it a little bit. You know, in, in, introduce better um, um, systems of um, of connections or you know screwing things together and so forth. So I'd encourage you just watch and listen. There's a lot to be learned from the local context. And all these materials are okay. care. Wherever you have um, a tropical climate, you will have latrite in, and mud, you will have the bamboo and, and so forth. So it's very, very similar as to the way we build. And I would encourage you to also look at some very wonderful books on traditional building materials these days. There's a, there's a famous Venezuelan architect, I forget his, his, his name, who has a, several good books. And I would encourage you to have a look at it. It's very inspirational. Perhaps, Joe, um, after um, the conference, you can send me the links and then I can forward them on to the students. I shall. I shall. I want to switch gears a little bit. And, Joe, as this is a true dialogue, I want to give you the opportunity to ask the students questions. Um, so do you have a question for students down in South Plantation, Florida? Hello, uh, students. Well, I'm very fascinated about this whole notion of, of this thing, of structure. Um, but I would like to find out beyond just the physical, you know, the, kind of the, the literal interpretation of a building structure. How, what do you think about the structure of your communities? You know, the, the, the kind of the immediate com um, community and then the wider um, community as, as relates to culture and race and, you know, social uh, dynamics and so forth. I'm very, very interested about how you see your, yourself within the, the kind of the fabric and structure of um, of a contemporary America. Well, it's kind of like you go into one neighborhood and it's really fancy and built up and really nice. And when you go into another neighborhood, it's kind of run down and not so nice. And, you know. Thank you. Uh, uh, like some other neighborhoods, like like in one neighborhood, they just change it up. Like one street has one type of architecture, and they just mix it up, and then they just duplicate it in all the streets, and it's like really like the same thing over and over. 
um, our buildings are more dependent on like air conditioner and stuff like it's concrete so like it would not like even though we have like such great like environment we don't use it we, we mostly tend to stay inside because the buildings are comfortable and air conditioner and everything but um, we don't use the, our environment to create like something like you know bamboo house so the air can clear out or something and we don't tend to go outside that much because it's comfortable inside. Um, I must tell you, I must tell you that this is the same. This new kind of paradigm, this new kind of shift in, in emphasis from the in outdoors to the indoors, is a problem across the entire world. I mean, my 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 children uh, who live in Ghana, everyone is playing their PS2 and their Mario Super Mario Brothers thing, you know, <laughs> watching TV nonstop. So it's a, I mean, but I think that it's a result also of the poor physical planning of our neighborhoods. And for example, in Ghana, we cut down all the trees, which means that it's extremely hot outside. Why, who would, who would want to walk outside, correct? So it's your generation. You have to reverse this trend because you are living it and you know the kind of the negatives of such an existence. And I think that we need to go back to, um, in, uh, interacting uh, um, across race, across class, and across communities. And I think that um, it's wonderful to see such a wonderful mix in one classroom, but this mix should extend outside of the classroom in the way we approach making of our physical environment and also of our spiritual environment also. And I think to, anything to dig a little bit deeper into that question, how looking at the design of your community, how do you feel about the area that you live in? Is it something, is it an area you're very comfortable in? Is it a community that you're proud of? Um, a s student from South Plantation, you mentioned um, in the nicer neighbor, some, some areas are really nice and some are more run down. If, do people take pride in their communities? I guess that's what I'm getting at. Do you take pride in your community? Um, based on the aesthetics. Grace, is this, is this you are talking to me, correct? I'm asking the students in South Plantation, but feel free to hop in. Okay, okay, good. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, we do take pride in our community. Um, we have community centers. Um, the, the, our neighbors are really nice in the communities we live in. Um, the kids uh, in our neighborhoods well, the kids at school live in our neighborhood, so we interact a lot with them. And we have community centers where a lot of us go out and hang out. And, you know, we keep the lawns really nice. The structures of the houses are really nice. So, you know, we are proud. I, I am proud of my neighborhood. So, yes, we are. Thank um, you. Yeah, also in our neighborhoods, we have, like, a lot of recreational centers. You know, play football, um, city league, football, basketball, whatever. And, yeah, they just interact with each other. Um, my name's Cortland. Um, I think it depends on where you live, if you really take pride in your neighborhood. Because um, where I live, um, we actually do have, like another student said, the community center is where everyone's interactive. They have like the football, the basketball, everyone goes plays and everything. But like I noticed like if I all go to like other places, like certain people will stay inside all the time, won't interact with other people that live close to them. So I guess it really depends on the whole like perceptive, perceptive thing. Thank you. That's great. That's great to know that your community is so involved and that there is just a central place for you all to meet and interact and, and hang out. I'm going to throw the question to uh, Westmount Charter. Um, what about you? And Joe, please feel free to chime in. Hi there. Uh, once again, my name is Lucas. I'm one of the students that uh, went to Ecuador. We actually met with the um, principals of both schools to see exactly what the needs were and what the building requirements. You're on mute, Lucas. 